video we will be looking at Mastering Assistant which was introduced with the 10.8 update for Logic. The idea with this plugin is that the mastering process is reduced down into a single plugin with simplified controls. In this project I have a rough mix. This is one of the remixes I made and I've done gain staging so there's enough headroom for the mastering process and for the volume to be pushed up. Now, Mastering Assistant can be found on the Stereo Out channel. Whenever you create a new project, it will be automatically inserted here. It's turned off by default, so click to activate it, and it will immediately start analyzing the contents inside the project. If you have other plugins on the Stereo Out channel, make sure to bring Mastering Assistant to the bottom, so it will be the last audio effect in the chain. So this is what it looks like once the analysis is done. Essentially, Mastering Assistant allows us to adjust three things. EQ, loudness, and stereo width. Now, if I play the track, you can immediately tell that it's much louder. This is because Mastering Assistant pushes up and optimizes the loudness. To hear the effect of Mastering Assistant without this increased loudness, we can press loudness compensation and it will match the volume of the processed mix to the volume of the original mix. Let's keep loudness compensation on for now. Also, if we wanted to have Mastering Assistant analyze a specific section in the project, we can do that using the locators. Turn on the locators by pressing C, and I'm setting this over the loudest section in the track. Then click Reanalyze section, and Mastering Assistant will redo its analysis and give us new parameters based on that particular section. Now let's take a look at EQ first. What this is, is a corrective EQ curve that Mastering Assistant provides us based on its analysis. We can see that certain frequencies are boosted or reduced, and how much of this curve is applied can be determined by this slider. So if I bring this all the way down, there is no EQ curve applied, and if I bring this all the way up, it will be applied to the maximum extent. We can also use these blue points that appear on the EQ curve to manually make adjustments. We can move it up or down, and the values for gain and frequency will be displayed at the bottom. We can move it left or right. Note that each of these blue dots is assigned to a specific EQ band, so the horizontal movement might be limited. For example, this dot is not letting me drag it further to the left. If you made a bunch of adjustments to the EQ curve and want to bypass the changes, you can click Custom EQ down here and compare between the Mastering Assistant's Corrective EQ Curve and your version. There are also four character presets, Clean, Valve, Punch, and Transparent. Transparent is suitable for most genres of music and other modes might work better for certain styles of music such as Valve for hip hop and Punch for rock. However, keep in mind that these presets, other than clean, will require Apple Silicon to run. Let's move over to the spread section. Here we have only one knob to control, and its initial position is determined by the analysis. So right now it's slightly turned to the right, meaning that Mastering Assistant judged that this mix was a bit narrow. Turning the knob all the way to the left will make the mix mono and turning it to the right will increase the stereo width. While using this knob, we should pay attention to the correlation meter. As I increase the spread, it gets closer to zero in the middle. If the value goes lower than zero, it means that there is out of phase material in the mix and there will be phase cancellation. So we should make sure that on the correlation meter, we are staying in the green zone and the number is way above zero. Finally, let's take a look at the dynamics section. According to Apple, Mastering Assistant adjusts the loudness to optimize the perceived volume to meet the industry standards considering the requirement for streaming platforms. And this is done particularly by targeting minus 14 LUFS with the loudness knob in the center. So if I play the track right now with the knob in the center, 
the level should come out around minus 14 LEFS. We can check that with the meters here. There are three kinds of meter, momentary, short-term, and integrated loudness. The integrated loudness meter can give us the average of a long piece of audio or the whole track. And we can start the meter by pressing here. And we can see that with the loudness knob at the center, we have minus 14 LEFS. It's also important to note that the true peak is set to minus 1 dBFS. And this is a ceiling, so the highest level would not exceed minus 1 dBFS. And we cannot change this value. In addition, this excite button will add saturation to the upper mid-range frequencies of your mix. Let's try increasing the loudness in combination with the excite button. I need to turn off loudness compensation. Here we go again. So as I turn the loudness knob pretty drastically with the excite button, I can hear some distortion and also the pumping effect feels stronger. It's best to be careful with these controls and we can also perhaps use other metering devices to evaluate mastering assistance work. 